All right. I got the camera going here. Our lesson today comes out of 2 Kings chapter 17. Those of you that have Bibles, go ahead and find 2 Kings chapter 17. And those of you who are asleep already, <laughs> we're not going to worry about that. While you guys are finding your, well, while you guys are finding the scriptures, and if you need help, raise up your hand and I'll come over and help you out. 2 Kings chapter 17. 2 Kings chapter 17. You need a hand? All right, let's see. That's 2 Kings, that's chapter 7. Here, verse 17. See, this is your chapter here. And then after the two dots, this is chapter 8. So you've got to keep going to get to chapter. The big numbers are your chapters, and the little numbers are your verses. So 1 Kings, or, I'm sorry, it's 1 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 17, and starting with verse 1, that's it, you got it. Verse 1, you got it. This is it, this is it. Who's? Yep, that's chapter 17. This is it. You got it. Okay, you're in 2 Kings, now find in the big... Black numbers, find chapter 17.
These are your gods. Worship them. And he set them up in cities in the northern kingdom of Israel. So that they wouldn't go to the southern. And yes, it did make God mad. But here's the thing. You see, we all do things that make God mad. We all do things that offend God. You know what it's called? Sin. Sin. We all sin. Raise your hand if you've sinned. Come on. And if you're not a, if you're not asleep, raise your hand if you've never sinned in your whole life. You just sinned. You told a lie. You just sinned. You told a lie. Here's why the Bible says that everybody has sinned. There's nobody, nobody's exempt. We all do. There's only one person I know of that never sinned. Jesus. Jesus never sinned. But the rest of us, we all sin. Every one of us. Every last one of us. God? So, God doesn't sin. God can't sin. How can God break his own rules? He can't. He makes the rules. He doesn't break them. But, we humans, because God's not human. God is a spirit. But, we humans, we mortals, we bare yeah, so mortals, <laughs> we all sin. Every one of us. But God forgives us. If we do what? Sin. Well, we sin, but what do we have to do after we sin? Ask forgiveness. Ask, forgiveness. Ask for mercy. Both of you are correct. Ask for grace. That's correct. But what more must we do? Repent. Repent. And what does that mean? To confess your sins. Confess your sins. That's a start. But it takes a little more than that. Ask God to forgive you. That's that goes with confessing. A little more than that. Stop sinning. Stop sinning. Stop sinning. Stop sinning. Sinning. Stop sinning. Sinning. Stop sinning. Stop sinning. sinning. You said sinning. No, it says sinning. 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 There's no G there. Sinning. Stop sinning. Stop. You see? There's a G. Stop it. If let's pretend for a second that this is God, and when I sin, I turn my back on God and I walk away from Him. <laughs> And I walk away from God. That's what happens when we sin. But at one point, we go, what am I doing? And you stop walking away from him. And you turn around. And this is, this is confessing your sins to God. This is asking forgiveness. And you stop. You turn your back on your sins. And you start walking back toward God. That is what repenting is. You stop sinning. You stop doing what's wrong, and you start doing what's right. But Israel never did that. Israel never did that. And God sent people to Israel again and again and again. And they said to Israel, stop sinning. Turn around go back to God serve God stop what you're doing and it's like the people of Israel going la 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 you know that one's going to hit the that one's going to that one, that one's going to be on the video la 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 I can't hear you does anybody Remember any of the names of the prophets that God sent? Elisha? Elisha was one. Elijah? Elijah was another. Did you have your hand up? You're going to say Elijah? Who was here last week? I was here. I was here. Half here. Who did we talk about last week? Uh, Those of you who were here? Prophets? Oh. Hosea. Hosea. 
Hosea was another prophet. And God sent prophet after prophet after prophet to Israel. Stop sinning. Turn back to God. Put away your idols. Put away your false gods. And serve God only. And guess what they did? La, 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 la. I can't hear you. La, 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 la. I can't hear anything that you're saying. Now, I'm going to ask a little more confession out of y'all. How many of you have ever done things that made your mom or your dad mad? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Definitely. Oh yes. Now, I lost the dog. <laughs> Thank you all for being honest. Thank you all for being honest. But I'm not. I'm not. I'm not talking about just doing one thing. Like for example, my sisters used to love to pick at each other. I had three sisters, and they loved to pick at each other. And my mom would be so mad at them. Stop, stop your fighting, stop your fighting, stop your fighting. Would she and would throw something at them? Yeah. Oh, oh, they yeah. hurt much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That one is hilarious. Yeah. yeah, my mother used to throw things at us. Fortunately for us, my mother couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. My mother had bad aim. So if she threw something at you, she was probably going to miss you. And it's a good thing, too, because my mother was deadly. Here's the thing though, you push your parents, and 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 until what happens? Get the belt. Now my, now my mom, my mom wouldn't spank us because my mom had arthritis, and it hurt, it hurt her more than it hurt us, but she'd wait until my dad got home. My dad was a big guy. My dad... Now, my dad didn't dare use a belt because he was so big, he was afraid he was going to hurt us. Instead, he would use his hand, and that was bad enough. <coughs> so we knew if we pushed our parents far enough, we knew we were going to get in trouble. We knew that. And when it got to that point that my mom said, you wait until your dad gets home, there was no talking her out of it. It was going to happen. So you can. So let's say it was. Uh, say it was about uh, oh about two o'clock in the afternoon when you got in trouble, and Dad was going to be home at four. You had two hours to think about what Dad was going to do to you, and he was going to do it. There was no stopping. You only have two hours. My mom's scared. That's called judgment. That's called judgment. You see, God is a very merciful God. And God will forgive you when you ask forgiveness of your sins. But if you keep ignoring God, la, 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 I can't hear you, God. I can't hear you. Pretty soon, you're going to push them too far. And then judgment. Then judgment you're going to get in trouble, and there's no stopping it. And if there's one thing you don't want, you don't want to get in trouble with God. But you know what? Israel did. God, for hundreds of years, God kept sending prophets to Israel, saying, stop what you're doing. Stop your sinning. Stop your sinning. Turn back to God. And they kept refusing, la, 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 I can't hear you. And finally, it got to a point where God had had enough. Who would like to read? Jordan, I saw your hand first. Give me chapter 17, verses 1 and 2. Ahaz. Ahaz, king of Judah, Hosea, the son of Eva, became king of Israel in Sam Samaria. Samaria, and he reigned. Reigned nine years. 
And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, but not as the kings of Israel who were before him. Okay. Now he wasn't as bad, but he was still bad. Now I'm, I'm going to read because it's got some big words here. Shalmaneser, king of Assyria. Does anybody remember Assyria? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Yeah, they did. But what was the capital city of Assyria? Does anybody remember? It starts with an N. Nineveh? Nineveh. Nineveh was the capital city of Assyria. And who got sent to Nineveh? Jonah! Jonah! Because Jonah was a prophet. And the king of Assyria, Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria, came up against him. And Hosea became his vassal, that means became his servant, and paid him tribute money. And the king of Assyria uncovered a conspiracy by Hosea, for he had sent messengers to So, the king of Egypt, and brought no tribute to the king of Assyria as he had done year by year. Therefore the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Now, who else would like to read? Favor? Uh, why don't you... Read for me chapter five, uh, verse five, please. Verse five, please. Okay. Is that everything? Okay. So the king of Assyria came down into Israel. And he attacked Samaria. Samaria was the capital city of Israel. And for three years, he didn't allow anybody to come into the city or anybody to go out. And finally, verse 6, In the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm choking on my own spit here. had carried Israel away to Assyria and placed them in Hala and, and by the Habor, the river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes. So here's what happened. You see, Israel kept sinning against God. And God sent prophets to them and said, stop what you're doing. Stop it. And they wouldn't listen. And finally, it got to a point where no more. God said, no more. It's judgment time. And the king of Assyria came down, and he took Samaria. He took the king and put him in prison. And he took all the people of Israel, and he forced them to leave their homes, and he forced them to leave their lands, and he put them in other, in other countries, in other cities, in other countries. Now, Imagine, if you will, somebody forcing you to leave your house and you have to move someplace you've never been before. You have no idea what the place is like. Away from your home, away from your family, and you're all alone. You know what? After a while, you'd miss them. But here's the thing. After a while, you start missing your home. You, you're in a completely strange place. Now, how many of you are were born here in Phoenix? Okay, put your hands down. How, how many of you moved here from somewhere else? And you remember that you were born here? No, I was born in a different Yeah, but you were here. Your, your folks lived here when you were born. Okay, so you were born here. Yeah, you moved to Mexico, but and you were born where? In Africa? Yeah. Do you do you remember Africa? You're you're still pretty young, so yeah. I wasn't born here. I was born far away. I was born in Pennsylvania. Let's see. How is it there? It's cold. It's cold. Back at the early part of this year, 
or this year, the early part of this month, when we were getting 100 degree temperatures here, they were getting snow. What? Yeah. They got snow. Miss Faith was born in Indiana. Long way from here. I prefer living here myself. Okay, I, I don't live anywhere near where I used to. But when I was a kid, we moved here. And I didn't like it much. I was in second grade when we moved here the first time. And, I, and you know, I had some friends and all that. I had some friends. And then we moved away. We moved back to Pennsylvania. And we moved out here again when I was in fifth grade. And I hated it because it was so hot here. And I didn't have a whole lot of friends. All my friends were back in Pennsylvania. And I had to leave them. And I didn't like it. That's how Israel felt, except for one thing. A year later, my parents moved again. This time we moved to New York. Seriously. But seriously, not New York City. Not New York City. I lived near New York City when I lived in New Jersey oh. when I was preschool. Why did you guys have to keep moving? Because my parents wanted to. What's that? Wanderlust. That's no, they they figured that Phoenix was better for our health, but my dad couldn't find work, so we moved back. But they liked Phoenix, so they moved us back. And my dad had a real good job, and then he felt God saying, "Go into the ministry," and so we went to New York. And after 19 years, I decided, you know what, I'm going to go back to Phoenix. And here I've been. But it's nothing like it's nothing like New York or Pennsylvania. It's completely different. But here's, here's the thing, though. I'm in Arizona because I chose to come to Arizona. If it wasn't my choice, I don't know that I'd like it so much here. Israel was forced to leave their homes. They were forced to leave everything that they had, everything that they owned. They were forced to give it up. They were poor now. Where they had been rich before, now they're poor. And they're living in a place they have no idea. For generations, for hundreds of years, they lived in Israel. Their people have lived in Israel. Now they're gone. How far is Israel from America? It's a long way. Let me just say this. From Israel to here, it's noon right now here. In Israel, it's 10 o'clock at night. Oh, yeah, I know that. Mm -hmm. Well, so we're asleep, they're awake. Mm -hmm. I know yep. that, too. In Africa, the same thing. Yeah, in Africa, they're, they're about the same time. Uh, they're the same time as Eastern Africa. Yeah. So, actually, Western Africa, and I know that's where your family's from, is Western Africa. They're an hour closer. But still, Wait, that's nine hours. Are they ahead of us or behind us? They're ahead of us. So they, they're ahead of us. Tomorrow. Ten hours ahead of us. All right. So, anyway, that's enough to say that. Israel finally got to the point where they offended God so much, there was no turning back. There was nothing more that they could do. They were going to be punished. Listen, God loves us very much. And we need to love God. And Josiah, how do you know that you love God? Eric, how do you know that you love God? By doing the right things. Exactly. The Bible says, God says to us, if you love me, you'll obey me. You know how your parents know that you love them? You obey them. If, you're, if, you, will, if you won't obey your parents, they're going to start questioning, well, do they really love me? But as much as God loves us, we can push him to a point. And he says, I can't, I can't give you any more chances. God will give you a second chance. God will give you a third chance. God will give you a fourth chance. But there comes a point where he says, no more chances. That's it. Judgment falls. Please, don't ever get to that place. Israel did a very foolish thing. And they lost their homes because of it. They got in trouble over it. Answer. That's just an alarm saying, Dave, it's time to shut up. Okay. And I am finishing up here. Guys, you tell me that you love God. Here's how you prove it. 
You obey Him. You worship God. You serve God. All your lives, serve God. Don't ever get to that point that Israel got to where there's no more helping you. Don't ever get to that point because there are people that they push God too far. And, you know, things are going bad for them. Some of them, they lose their minds. Some, sometimes they lose their homes, yeah. But some people, they lose their minds. I've, I've known where people have gotten killed because they just they just thumb their noses at God. <clears throat> well, that didn't work, did it? Guys, listen up. Serve God. Serve God. That's the smart thing to do. Don't, don't be like Israel. Israel did a dumb thing. Don't ever get to that point. Serve God. Now I know you. Every one of us is going to slip up. Every one of us is going to do something stupid. Every one of us is going to sin. Every one of us is going to. But when you do, please, tell God you're sorry. Repent and stop sinning. Stop doing what you were doing. And go back to God. And you will... God will love you all the days of your life, and He will bless you. He'll help you. All right. <clears throat> Let's bow our heads. Father, I thank You for Your many blessings. Lord, may we never get to the point where Israel got to, but may we serve You all of our lives. Lord, may we please You. May we show our love for You by obeying You. And Lord, I know that if we do, then you will love us. And you will stay with us always. And you'll bless us and you'll prosper us. Because you love us so much. We thank you for the gift of Jesus. Because he purchased life for us where we deserve death. Father, for each, each of the kids that have heard my voice today, I ask you to, to touch them that that this lesson be real for them and that it stays in their hearts all their lives. We ask in Jesus' name and we thank you. Amen. Amen.